I'm just presenting um, a case report with some literature review about spontaneous perforated Michel diverticulum in adult. Um, and actually, this patient, she's a 30. Is my voice is so clear? Yeah. Okay, she's a 36 years old female. She's a healthy woman. Uh, she presented to our uh, emergency with uh, acute abdominal pain for two days. Uh, the pain actually was in the lower abdomen. Uh, she wasn't uh, clearly about whether it is in the right or left, but the pain is increasing in, uh, in severity with time and becoming more, more painful and debuse. So um, uh, was also the pain associated with nausea, vomiting, and on examination, there was a mild distended abdomen. It was tender in the, uh, in the lower abdomen, mainly in the left side, with no rebound and uh, no masses was bulbable and there was no uh, organomegal. Uh, we did for her an chest X-ray, uh, I mean, abdominal X-ray at the beginning uh, with a chest X-ray. The abdominal X-ray actually, it didn't show something uh, clear except of just a plebolith of um, uh, stool at the uh, uh, right upper uh, area. Uh, we did also for her ultrasound, uh, we found just a three mil of free fluid in the right iliac fossa. Uh, patient because of the increasing pain and we wasn't able to diagnose her whether she has an, uh, I mean, acute appendicitis or something else. So we proceeded with a CT scan uh, unfortunate, the CT scan at the beginning uh, was showing uh, almost there is no specific finding of her acute abdomen. And the uh, final report came that she has only diffuse circumferential wall thickening involving the jejunum and the proximal part of the small uh, bowel. So uh, they give us a differential diagnosis of enteritis more than other uh, diagnoses. The patient actually uh, received a good antibiotics. Uh, she still complained of generalized abdominal pain uh, after receiving her and admitting her to the ward uh, for, one, uh, for one more day. She was looking annual. Uh, she was in pain and distress. So um, uh, the, oh, even the abdominal examination, the tenderness was increasing, uh, mainly in the left lower quadrant. And uh, she was uh, showing a sign of peritonitis, uh, plus uh, she was tachycardic and uh, she showed a picture of shortness of a breath. So this is her chest X-ray, uh, um, almost one day after presenting to the ER, which showed that she has a, a telectasis. In addition to, uh, I mean, uh, she has a family history of some uh, congenital anomalies in her coagulation. Uh, plus this, I mean, we were uncertain about the diagnosis. So we proceeded with a CT, CT angio, uh, mainly to rule out uh, pulmonary embolism. And the CT angio actually came negative for any uh, pulmonary embolism. But the good things that showed that she has a bilateral, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, showed bilateral uh, lower lung consolidation, but at least we could diagnose her uh, abdomen. So CT abdomen angio done in the same setting, which showed small bowel perforation, uh, demonstrated the air fluid level and uh, polypoidal projection in the middle of the small bowel. This is her CT. This is her CT scan, uh, which you could, this is the transsectional view. Uh, you could see, uh, see some inflammatory process here and some, uh, uh, some inflammation around the small bowel with, uh, with some gases, uh, uh, we call it pneumoperitoneum here. A plus you could see the same picture here of pneumoperitoneum here and some inflammation around the small bowel. So uh, we took the patient for exploration uh, laparotomy. I just wanna 
minimize the uh, minimize the screen because there is something here I cannot. Um, So we talk here to the uh, for uh, exploration laparotomy, and uh, we found that she has a perforated diverticulum. We found that I mean uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, inflammatory fluid. Actually, I cannot I cannot see the uh, half of the screen. Just let me just check something, please. Yeah, at the, I, I don't know when I put it in a show screen, I cannot see the uh, half of the screen. So uh, sorry for that. I will just keep it like this for the time being. So we take care for exploratory laparotomy and intraoperative, we found a fibrinous exudate with a purulent fluid about one and a half liter. And uh, we found a perforated Michels diverticulum, which was located almost 40 centimeter from the ileocecal uh, uh, junction. So uh, the Michels diverticulum was uh, uh, perforate at the pace, and uh, we elected to do for her, uh, I mean, uh, diverticulotomy uh, by segmental resection and end-to-end uh, -end, uh, anastomosis of the uh, ileum. I'll just try again to... Uh... So this is a picture of the, uh, this is the diverticulum, this is a small bowel. This is a, a small bowel inflammation, and this is a diverticulum. You could see it. I don't know if my pointer is uh, working or no, but I will, I will try to show it again. Working, so, we can see it, yeah, we can see yeah. it. Yeah, this is a inflammation, this is a small bowel, and this is the perforation here. And this is the perforation near to the base of the diverticulum. Uh, that's why we elected to do for her uh, segmental resection. And that's so you could see this is part of the small bowel and this is the diverticulum and this is the perforation here. So post-op, the patient actually stayed in the hospital for nine days. Actually, um, she developed a uh, severe acute respiratory distress, uh, after, uh, ARDS after the procedure. Uh, I think because of the delayed diagnosis, uh, she cascading so fast and uh, she, uh, I mean, from the chest point of view. So the patient went, I mean, shifted to the ICU, intubated, extubated twice. Uh, she been put in BiBab uh, for, for couples of days till she, she came, uh, I mean, good and she uh, shifted to the normal ward. Then she discharged home with a good, uh, good condition. This is her latest, uh, last uh, chest x-ray, which was normal, uh, if you compare it to the previous one, which showed bad uh, atelectasis. Uh, I'll just speak, uh, uh, I mean, uh, quickly about the uh, uh, diverticulum, Michel's diverticulum, if you allow me. Um, this is a, a clear picture of Michel's diverticulum. You could see the small bowel, and this is the diverticulum here. So definition of the Michel's diverticulum, it is a congenital uh, diverticular arising from the anti-mesentric uh, border of the terminal ileum. Uh, it is, as we said, it is a congenital thing. So it is uh, during the eight weeks of the gest gestation, the omphalomesentric, we, we call it the vitelline duct, normally it is obliterate, but if it's key patent, it will make the uh, di diverticulum. So the failure of incomplete obliteration of the vitelline duct result in some congenital abnormalities and the most common is a Michels diverticulum. So this is, a, I mean, just a, I mean, diagram uh, explaining how the developmental uh, happen. Uh, and after after all uh, all this, you could see the uh, formation of the diverticulum. Uh, the Michels diverticulum actually um, sometimes attached to the uh, to the umbilicus. If it is just like this diverticulum and attached with a with a ligament, the patient sometimes might complain of uh, abdominal pain, discomfort, and uh, sometimes discharge uh, from the umbilicus, uh, uh, which is less likely. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's forming like a cyst, okay, with no connection to the bowel or to the umbilicus, 
but still patients sometimes complaining, uh, I mean, complaining of pain and sometimes might discharge. But if it's, it's forming a fistula, there's connection between the small bowel and the umbilicus, patient will uh, complain of uh, continuously uh, minimal discharge through the umbilicus and uh, usually sometimes become difficult to diagnose. So most common congenital abnormalities of the gastrointestinal uh, tract is the mycles, contain all the layer, or so we call it a true diverticulum, all the three layers of the bowel with independent blood supply, uh, often contain a uh, heterotopic tissues, uh, either gastric, sometimes pancreatic. So uh, also it uh, might uh, it, uh, uh, go to the inguinal or femoral uh, canal and uh, making a hernia, we call it letters hernia. It is uh, the most common congenital anomalies. It's, uh, it's occurring in 2% of the general population. So we have a rule of two, 2% uh, of gen uh, general popula population. It's uh, the prevalence is 2% uh, between male and female. So it is uh, male is more uh, predominant than the female. It, uh, it's uh, most of the time it's happening two feet uh, proximal to the ileocecal uh, valve, which is almost the same what, what happened in our patient. 50% uh, of the patient are symptomatic and most of them, they are under, uh, they are child under uh, two years of age. And uh, to complete the two, uh, two uh, rules, it, it's contained uh, two types of uh, tissues, either gastric mucosa or sometimes pancreatic uh, uh, tissues. This is again, 2% uh, of the population, uh, two feet proximal to the ileocecal uh, valve, uh, two inches long, two times more common in male than female. Uh, it is symptomatic uh, before the two years of age. And in adult patient, it is uh, it's symptom, it's symptomatic only in 2%. Uh, the clinical uh, presentation, majority of the people with Michael's diverticulum are clinically asymptomatic. So most of them, they will have no symptoms, but if they have symptoms, they, their symptoms are varies from severe uh, abdominal pain to just uh, discomfort. So uh, some complication could happen. Patient might have severe hemorrhage, intersusception because the diverticulum will uh, work as a lead point uh, the Mikkel's diverticulum may be become diverticulitis. Uh, it might uh, mimic uh, the chronic peptic ulceration because of the content of the gastric uh, tissues, uh, tissues inside the, uh, the diverticulum, or sometimes it might cause intestinal obstruction if it is inflamed and obstructing the bowel. Uh, the patient, uh, how they came with a severe hemorrhage because of the, it is painless rectal bleeding. It's like a more colored uh, hemorrhage, uh, co mainly caused by the ectopic gastric or pancreatic mucosa. When the diverticulum contain a perineic remnant of a mucosa, it might uh, bleed with inflammation. Uh, plus secretion of the gastric acid or alkaline pancreatic uh, juice from the uh, ectopic uh, I mean, tissues in, inside the uh, diverticulum might ulcerate and inflamed and uh, bleed. Uh, perforation could happen because of the continuous inflammation and ulceration. As we said, it's uh, mimicking a lot of uh, acute abdominal uh, pain, like sometimes peptic ulcer disease, also sometimes mimicking the uh, symptoms of acute appendicitis as we are, th we are thinking in our patient. And the uh, diverticulosis, diverticulosis, uh, diverticulosis, uh, diverticulitis by itself could result, as we said, from the peptic ulceration uh, because of the migration of the ectopic gastric uh, mucosa inside the diverticulum, or sometimes because of the perforation, uh, either because of trauma, or sometimes because of the ingestion of, uh, of food or foreign body. And the, uh, the lumen of the Michels diverticulum could obstruct uh, formation, uh, I mean, transformation to a tumor is very rare, but could happen. And uh, as we said, it could uh, make some uh, uh, food stasis there in the, in the diverticulum itself and making bacterial infection. Uh, 
we just repeating the same that could be also mimicking perforated duodenal ulcer, uh, whether it is perforated or no, if it is keep symptoms, a surgery is the best answer for a surgery is the best solution for this, uh, for this, uh, I mean, a patient. A non perforated case and inflammation and inflamed diverticulum should be uh, sought as soon as it is, has been demonstrated because it could mimic uh, any, uh, any, any, any other uh, diagnosis, as like the appendix uh, or in female fallopian tube uh, pathology. Obstruction. Uh, it co maybe it lead to a, a volvulus of the intestine because it will work as a, uh, I mean, like a fibrous uh, band attaching uh, between the diverticulum and the umbilicus, as we saw it in the last picture. If there is like a band between the small bowel and the umbilicus, the, the bowel will turn and uh, torch around the, uh, the uh, tract. Uh, intersusception could also happen because the diverticulum will work as a lead point and cause the intersusception structure to the chronic inflammation of the diverticulum. A tumor turn, uh, turn out could happen. It's so rare, but uh, there is a reported case of carcinoid, adenocarcinoma, just tumor could arise from the diverticulum. This is a picture of the uh, diverticulum. If there is, I mean, uh, a band, this band, uh, this band could lead the bowel to turn around it and the patient come with intestinal obstruction. Diagnosis, uh, we, we depend on, as we mentioned before, abdominal X-ray at the beginning, ultrasound and uh, CT scan. Uh, the most specific uh, tools for diagnosis is the Technetium 99, or call, they call it Mikkel's uh, scan. It is actually positive uh, in most of the patient, uh, some literature saying up, up to uh, 95% when a diverticulum associated, especially with the ectopic gastric mucosa uh, during the inflammation. Um, as we mentioned, CT scan, angio could, uh, could be helpful also as in our patient. This is the Mikkel's uh, uh, I mean, technician scan. Uh, this is how it's look uh, positive with uh, with time uh, when the diverticulum especially contain uh, ectopic gastric mucosa. Uh, the differential diagnosis, as as we mentioned, patient could come with the acute abdomen. You could suspect intestinal obstruction, uh, hematochasia, appendicitis, intersusception, lower GI bleeding, especially if containing gastric mucosa and led to bleeding, uh, angiodysplasia, uh, and malignancy or arteriovenous malformation, which is very rare. Complication, as we have mentioned before, uh, diverticulum could turn to ulceration, could uh, present with hemorrhage, uh, or intestinal obstruction, or could uh, uh, inflamed and cause diverticulitis or uh, perforation as it happened and uh, was happened with, the, with our patient. Uh, the symptoms, um, uh, I mean, uh, patient, as we said, that, that could come with abdominal pain, symptoms of intestinal obstruction, nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension, uh, and the constipation, or a picture of di diverticulitis fever with high uh, leukocytosis, uh, or a patient could have a fistula if it is open, especially to the umbilicus. Uh, there is some incidental, incidental discovery of the Michael diverticulum, patient younger than uh, 40 years, uh, like in our patient, or if the uh, diverticulum more than two centimeter, like in our patient, uh, our patient has a wide neck, and it was perforate at the at the uh, at the pace. Uh, and our patient also the histopath turned to be that she has ectopic gastric uh, tissues. Uh, the management actually, as we mentioned before, that it is uh, it's surgery. Uh, there is so many type of surgery for the uh, for the Michels uh, diverticulum. Either you you do the diverticulotomy. Uh, especially if the, if the inflammation or perforation only at the tip of the diverticulum. So we used a um, uh, stapler, special stapler, linear stapler, and we just uh, resect the diverticulum 
with the keeping the continuity of the uh, small, uh, small bowel. Uh, there is another different uh, procedure. I don't want to, to go, uh, for, uh, I mean, so complicated, but as we mentioned before, it is either you do, uh, I mean, uh, resection anastomosis. Let me just expand the, this one. That will be more clear. It is either you do diverticulotomy, you resect only the diverticulum. You could either go for a resection and plus uh, anastomosis as what happened in our patient, or uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes you could, I mean, uh, the patient could uh, come with more complication, more perforation, so he might require more uh, resection and anastomosis. And unfortunate sometimes if it is uh, complicated, it, my patient has, uh, will, uh, I mean, have to have a stoma before you uh, retain to continue. So uh, conclusion, diagnosis of the nickel diverticulum in adult is challenging. Uh, it's occur in our patient, uh, uh, it's in our patient, though it's rare, but uh, you should keep it in mind. Perforation is a rare complication of the nickel diverticulum and the presentation could mimic any uh, acute abdomen condition. So uh, early diagnosis with a proper intervention provide the best outcome for this patient and uh, will decrease the risk of uh, Thank you. This is the end of my uh, 